Hey guys, Will here. Welcome back to another quick tips video. So today I'm going to be showing you how to enable VRSS or variable rate super sampling for VR in pretty much any game title. So if you already know what VRSS is and you just want to jump ahead to the instructions on how to enable it, jump into the description. I've put a timestamp there for you so you can jump straight into the instructions. For those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about, let's hang around and talk about it just a little bit first. So VRSS stands for variable rate super sampling. So super sampling is basically just rendering frames at a higher resolution than the native resolution of the panel or the panels in the case of VR that it's being sent to. So that allows us to increase the overall visual fidelity very slightly and it really it, it varies depending on different VR headsets. So the HP Reverb that I use personally, I find that even though it's got really high resolution panels and it looks quite good in the close-up detail, when you start to look into the distance, particularly in sim racing titles, uh, it starts to look quite blurry and super sampling can actually really help out a lot with that. So generally speaking, people recommend you run super sampling, you know, above 100% just to sort of increase that overall visual quality. But that does, of course, come with a performance hit as well. So when you increase the resolution of what's being rendered by your PC, you also increase the load on the PC and therefore affect the overall frames per second as well. So it ends up being a bit of a balancing act between, you know, having the best visual quality you can without sacrificing too much in terms of frame rate. So that is where variable rate super sampling comes in. So that allows us to increase the resolution of just the areas that are in our primary sort of field of view. So when you're using VR, mostly you're moving your head around to sort of look around the scene. You're not moving your eyes quite so much. And a lot of the reason for that is because the optics in the VR headsets themselves aren't all that fantastic a lot of the time. So you end up sort of, you, you get a blurry image anyway when you look off from the center. So the overall effect of that is that a lot of that additional resolution is actually wasted in terms of super sampling when you look off into your peripheral vision. So what VRSS does is it allows us to render just the areas that we're interested in in higher resolution and leave the areas that are in our peripheral vision out so that we're not increasing the load on the PC as much as we would otherwise but we're still getting the increased visual fidelity in the areas that are important to us. So with that explained, let's jump into how you actually do it. So at CES 2020, they made a big deal about this being a driver level thing that didn't require any additional code to be implemented by game developers. And that got people really excited, but unfortunately they do still have a system whereby developers need to submit their applications to NVIDIA to have approval. Very similar to what we had with G-Sync years ago. You'll remember you had to have a G-Sync approved monitor to be able to use it, even though technically it could work with any monitor that supported adaptive sync. And later on they actually enabled it for all monitors that have adaptive sync. So just like with their G-Sync technology, NVIDIA are wanting to hold this pretty close to their chest. They wanted to make sure that games are approved before people sort of get on and try them out, simply because they don't want people coming back and saying that VRSS is garbage because it doesn't work properly with their title. So obviously I can't guarantee that this is gonna work well for every single title, but you can enable it for all titles that support DX11 or 12, uh, MSAA and forward rendering compatible as well. So as long as you meet that criteria, you can go ahead and enable this. So let's jump in now and I'll show you how to do it. So the first thing that you'll need to do is make sure you're running the most up-to-date NVIDIA driver. Drivers that are newer than the 18th of January 2020 should work with this. But yeah, just make sure you're updated to the latest version. You can use GeForce Experience to do it. You can jump on the NVIDIA website and download directly if you want to as well. So with the latest driver installed, we're going to right click on our desktop, click on NVIDIA control panel. And then we're going to click on manage 3D settings. And we're going to go under global settings tab. We're going to scroll all the way to the bottom here. And you can see we have virtual reality variable rate super sampling off. So we're going to set that to adaptive. So click on the drop down, select adaptive, and then click apply. And now we're going to need to make sure that we have a profile loaded for each of the titles that we're going to actually want to enable this for. And now we're going to use Assetto Corsa as an example here. So we click on the drop down menu. We scroll until we find Assetto Corsa. There she is. And then if we scroll to the bottom here, we can see it says virtual reality, variable rate, super sampling, not supported for this application, sad face. So what we'll wanna do now is download another little program called NVIDIA Inspector. Now I've included a link in the description below to the version that works for this. Any version that's newer than this version should also work, but if you follow that download link in the description, you're guaranteed to get a version that will work. So download that one, extract the little zip file here, you'll be presented with a folder. So open the folder up and you will see a couple of different executables here. So we're going to right click on NVIDIA inspector.exe and go open as administrator or run as administrator. Accept the user account control prompt if you see one. And then you'll be presented with this little window here. So we're going to click on the little NVIDIA logo here next to driver version. So click on that. 
and you will be presented with this very, very complex looking window here. But don't freak out, it's not too difficult. So we're gonna select our Assetto Corsa profile here. Now, I couldn't find an easy way to search through these. There's a lot of titles here, but uh, yeah, just scroll down until you find what you're looking for. So there it is, Assetto Corsa, so we'll click on that. And then we're gonna scroll all the way to the bottom of the list until we see two values here, 0x00D5E9C6 and 0x00D5E9C7. So we're gonna click on the first one and we're gonna change that to 001 at the end. And then we're gonna click on the second one. Now you might find these values vary depending on the, uh, the title that you're modifying, but the values that you wanna set are the same. So regardless of the title, you're gonna set 001 in the first one and 002 in the second one. So make sure we've got 002 selected. So 9C6 is 001 and 9C7 is 002. So once you've done that, click on Apply Changes. And then you can go ahead and close off NVIDIA Inspector. It has done its job now, thank you very much. Then we're gonna right click on our desktop again, go back into NVIDIA Control Panel. Click on Program Settings again. And if we scroll to the bottom on Assetto Corsa now, you can see that we've got variable rate super sampling, use global setting adaptive. So it is now enabled. We can also force it to be adaptive if we want to as well, but we may as well go with the global setting. That way we have control of it from one place. So it's as simple as that guys. So I hope this has helped you out. Leave a big thumbs up if it has. Make sure you're subbed and hit the notification bell too so you don't miss future videos. And if you wanna help out the channel, there's a link in the description below where you can do that as well. There's lots of different ways you can help support Boosted Media and I really do appreciate that. But thank you very much for watching guys. Let me know in the comments if this has helped you out. Let me know if it's improved your VR experience and I'll see you guys again soon. Bye.